I want to get right to this Huawei uh, issue that, that you talked about on the call. Uh, they're your biggest customer, I believe, at, at around 13% recently. And you said, quote, we determined that we could lawfully resume shipping a subset of current products because they are not subject to export administration regulations and entity list restrictions. Uh, I know you didn't want to give a specific amount that you're shipping to Huawei over the last couple of weeks, but is it more than half of what you would normally be shipping them or less? So John, we don't talk specifics about customer revenue or uh, customer products that we ship to, but what I will tell you is that uh, in FQ4, the quarter we currently are in, our revenue shipments to Huawei would be less than, meaningfully less than what they would have been otherwise if the Huawei ban was not in effect. And similarly, you know, uh, if this, uh, these restrictions continue into our fiscal year 2020, uh, our outlook for revenue for Huawei uh, would likely be less than what it otherwise would have been without the ban. Important thing Can is that we are, go ahead. Go ahead. Important thing is that we are a well diversified company, you know, well diversified product line, addressing well diversified end markets and well diversified customer base across the globe. And we, of course, focus on continuing to optimize our business, just like we showed in our FQ3 results that we just reported. Even in a very challenging environment, we actually reported solid results for the company. Sanjay, how comfortable do you feel with your reading uh, of the rules on your shipments to Huawei that you're going to be able to continue to do that uh, since you talked about uh, the fact that you've started resuming some shipments over the last couple of weeks? Has the administration contacted you uh, or, or pushed back at all on your doing that? When the Huawei uh, was placed on the entity listing on May 16th, we immediately stopped shipments to Huawei. Um, our team of experts, legal experts, actually reviewed uh, our you know, complex set of R&D and manufacturing footprint across the globe and the product portfolio, and they studied the entity listing as well as the export administration uh, regulations uh, limitations and they determined that there is a subset of our products that we were previously shipping to Huawei that we can continue to be shipping. And of course with respect to the rest of the business we continue to assess against the complex set of regulations and against our complex footprint uh, to guide our actions for the future. Uh, of course the situation as you know does remain fluid with respect to uh, Huawei certainly has certain element of uncertainty. We will always comply with the rules and regulations of the U.S. government, as well as, for that matter, rules and regulations of uh, governments in all the regions where we operate. Sanjay, as a number of reports have pointed out in the last 24 hours, the regulations don't prohibit shipments of to Huawei of components that are made in foreign countries as long as they don't contain more than 25 percent of U.S. originated material. Do the regulations as they currently exist right now incentivize a company like Micron to move more business overseas? Well, you know, these are complex set of uh, regulations that are part of um, export administration regulations and restrictions. And there are all kinds of aspects in terms of technologies that are considered export control technologies, as well as country of origin, where you manufacture, what your supply chain looks like. All of those considerations are important. Micron is a very well diversified company across the globe in terms of our, our R&D centers of excellence spread out across the globe, as well as our manufacturing uh, footprint. And certainly that helps us in this situation as well. But we are absolutely continuing on the strategy that we have in terms of having a strong global footprint that already exists for the company and absolutely continuing to address our diversified markets and diversified set of customers because the end market applications for memory and storage that Micron makes are really are growing fast in terms of when you think about artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous, IoT, all of these are going to require more memory and storage in the future and we have a strong product roadmap, strong technology and manufacturing footprint, strong customer relationships and a winning team to continue to address the future opportunities, even though in the near term our industry is facing certain challenging aspects, you know, with respect to supply that is in excess that has impacted 
the industry. But of course, we are taking decisive actions that we discussed in our call yesterday with respect to yeah. cutting back right. on some of the production as well as CapEx for future in order to bring our supply in line with the demand as well as to help improve the industry supply demand balance. Uh, Sanjay, wanted to get your understanding. Do you object to the administration's uh, assertion that Huawei is a national security threat? We always, you know, respect, you know, what the administration, uh, its point of view, and, you know, uh, we will absolutely always focus on doing what is right in terms of complying with the laws and regulations that the government, uh, you know, enforces on the companies. And in this particular case, with respect to Huawei, we have absolutely uh, studied you know, those uh, regulations and have big on shipments. What I would say is I think it is very important that the two countries, U.S. and China, are able to resolve their differences, aspects of intellectual property, respect for intellectual property, fair level playing field. These are, of course, important aspects right. that our administration well, you, is trying to drive, and we well, absolutely support What do you think of companies? Those. There are companies that have voluntarily, effectively, decided to stop doing business with Huawei on their own, irrespective of the laws, given some of the IP issues and other concerns. Well, I think it's important that you know, the rulings by the administration and, you know, export administration regulations, we, as long as we comply with those, we then have to also take care of our contracts with mm -hmm. our customers that actually require us that if it is lawful to ship products, then we have to be able to ship products. So, you know, we have to, of course, in a very globally competitive environment, we have to continue to drive the business in an optimized fashion while complying with all the laws and regulations here. So we stop the right. shipments, and what we believe is we are doing the right thing for the long-term uh, competitiveness uh, of the company while complying with the laws and regulations. And I think it's important for the global competitiveness of the semiconductor industry, as you can see from other companies too, that you know, of, the Semiconductor Industry Association has indicated, are yeah. actually making their own decisions with respect to the shipments. So, Sanjay, speaking of, I, I want to talk about uh, CapEx, which you mentioned. Uh, you said that you're going to cut CapEx significantly for fiscal 2020, and that'll be one of the things that helps get the industry into healthy supply-demand balance. Um, do you think you'll be able to handle all of that in the one fiscal year? Is your sense, I mean, it's hard to know these things, but your sense that the rest of the industry is going to sort of uh, cooperate in that and not try to take advantage? So what's important to understand is that our industry currently, both in NAND flash as well as in DRAM, has excess supply and that has created a challenging pricing environment in the industry as well. And it, as because industry in the last six months had, you know, demand weakness, and what we have talked about is that in the second half of this calendar year, uh, the demand, bid demand, uh, will improve compared to the weak levels of the first half. So it's important to bring the inventory position, the supply situation, uh, be in better alignment with the demand projections that we have. And we have cost-effective inventory that we will carry into next year. You know, and as we are seeing the demand, for example, from the cloud operators here in the U.S. picking up, you know, driving our bid growth in the second half uh, of the calendar year, inventory situation will over time improve. But it is important to take actions with respect to supply growth. It's important to have shipments be exceeding the supply growth so that ultimately inventory gets in line and demand and supply gets in line. And again, when we look at the long-term trends of uh, driven by artificial intelligence, IoT and autonomous, they all point to increasing growth in demand for flash as well as for NAND memory, as well as for DRAM memory. And with time, it, it, the industry will get back to healthy supply demand balance. And we always look at our capex very carefully. And fiscal year 20, we are taking prudent, decisive action in cutting back our capex. And of course, these are things for ongoing future years as well. We will evaluate them, you know, as depending upon the industry conditions as well as our own uh, overall technology and production capabilities. Always a challenge uh, in the DRAM business and chips in general. Sanjay Marhotra, uh, CEO of Micron. Thanks for being with us.